Hello everyone, welcome to the Lower Speeds live class. Let's go ahead and get started. Mute everyone. All right, here we go. Let's start off with some, some uh, basic words. Hold, visit, seen, writer, bit, deal, college, consider, Notice, attached, condition, eat, sales, dearest, children, girls, unless, certain, plan, yourself, although, advance, greatly, picture, friends, Instant, haven't, wish, ask, careful, point, hot, else, separate, acknowledge, building, placed, gentlemen, fall, working, president, form, personal, Hundred, instead, trip, board, item, regular, goes, cars, miss, practice, including, folks. Hello, Pandora. How are you? How are I'm you better. doing? Good. I'm much better. Thank you. I still have a cough, but you do. I'm better. Yeah. Oh, man. How many days did you have that? Uh, I got it last Sunday. And um, and then my husband had it. And my first son is still coughing. Mm -hmm. And now my daughter has it. She feels really bad. Oh, and, no. Yeah. <clears throat> So, but yeah, we were just, all you can do is sleep. Yeah. And, yep. and all. So yeah. And drink fluids. Yep. I know my husband had it. He still has a cough and it's been, you know, mm -hmm. gosh, two weeks now. Yeah. The cough lingers <sighs> and it's, I mean, is it really, I mean, is it breaking up and you know what I mean when he coughs or yeah it's yeah. starting to now because at first yeah. I said well you might want to go to the doctor but now he said it's starting to break up so good yeah good. I'm sorry you're just super sick yeah so but the last couple of, no was it a couple of nights ago I couldn't sleep and I thought the heck with it and it was close to midnight and I watched last Monday's class so I was on my machine That's and then, good. yeah, yeah. So, That's cause good. I was, I couldn't even get on it. I was so dizzy and oh, warm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Ooh. Nora's here. here. Oh, there she is, the green screen. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Nora. Hi. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get started or we'll yeah. continue, I should say. All right, so these are going to be locations with numbers. Here we go. Delaware, 9,225. Indiana, 8,412. South Carolina, 51,815. Colorado, 14,000. 720. Hawaii, 33,189. Rhode Island, 4,000. 
417. Arkansas, 9,894. Pennsylvania, 9,852. Illinois, 8,931. Alabama, 25,022. Florida, 3,103. Uh, Alaska, 2,143. California, 35,129. Georgia, 37,118. Massachusetts, 5,792. Arizona, 1,318. Idaho, 6,200. 27, and Connecticut, 12,326. All right. <clears throat> now, here's some sentences with basic briefs from theory. We've got until, this, credit, can, account, and many. Here are your sentences. Credit this to the account. Many of us voted for this. Do many of you have accounts here? This account is closed. The accountant posted the amount to this account. This is certainly to his credit. Pay off the creditors. We will hold this until Friday. Can this be credited to my account? This company can maintain two accounts. Can we wait until November? There are many problems in this accounting system. Who is your accountant? The accountants recommend waiting until fall. Can we credit the funds to her account? This would seem to be the, the best plan until next week. Thomas is a credit to us. Many of the accounts need to have the credits reviewed. This can be credited to having so many different accounts of the incident. All right, now I've got a drill here that focuses on phrases. So you're going to hear she can, can you, can he, you can, he can, it can, we can. And here are your sentences. It can be done. He can do it. Can he get permission? She can take some time. Can you answer the question? Can he work tomorrow? Can he see again? Can the account be opened? It can be credited to your account. She can keep the books until you can use them. He can take a lot of credit. Can the car make the hill? We can come tomorrow. Can he build it? She can sew. All right, now I have some two-stroke words. Okay, here we go, ready? Coffee, leader, neutral, prairie, absorb, revise, process, extreme, retail, rebate, resist, across, remain, 
preserve, teacher, emerge, invoke, respect, reverse, prepare, reserve, protect, farmer, summer, afford, hammer, create, picture, mirror, famous, candid, jacket, surface, prudent, window, sandwich, billfold, retain, skipper, transom, uh, locate, confine, intent, lumber, rampant, forest, extreme, pattern, illness, fortune, anchor, summer, winter, consent, furtive, plastic, button, golden, walnut, demean, jackpot, ensign, darkness, entrance, silver, ballad, escape, perturb, tenant, fathom, hammock, octave, peanut, phantom, sputter. All right. Now, these are called retention sentences. Here we go, ready? The defendant contends that the alleged loss is excluded from coverage by various policy provisions. The plaintiff contends that he is entitled to recover medical costs under the policy's provisions. A hearing was held on this motion before Honorable J.L. Dewey, the circuit judge. The current definition is devoid of any indication that the oral communication must be reinstated. The party's conduct has been of an aggravated kind, reckless, willful, or wanton in nature. Such disparities in sentencing represent a major frustration to the prosecutors in child abuse cases. The heads of all departments and divisions will have a conference about the 2018 spending. A minimum of a million dollars was emphasized as being sufficient, thereby initiating immediate legislation. The fifth annual employee picnic was announced over the intercom system again Thursday and Friday. The palatial estate was torn down because the district was recently rezoned for commercial use. 
All right. Now, one of our last drills, <clears throat> we're gonna do some consonant compounds. This focuses on initial KR. Okay, here we go, ready? Good credit lends credence to the critical. A creditor's creed is credulous. The creek took his creel to the creek. Creepy critters cry critically. The cremator uses a crematory for cremating. The critical crest of the creek is near. The criminals crowed over their cricket. Crimson is created by cross coloring. On a crisp morning, a crisis was created. She created a cruel despite the critics. I heard the critter croak by the crocodile. Crouching and crying chronically creates a crisis. That was a cruel, crude crush on a crust. All right. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and move into literary and jury charge. All right, so the first one I'm going to read is a letter. Okay, so it's just a letter and uh, I will start this at 60 and I'll work my way to 100, okay? It's like two paragraphs long. All right, here we go, ready? Dear friend, this is your invitation to be our guest at a dinner party in honor of Dr. Carter. It will be held on this Wednesday evening, March 26, at the church. The dinner will be served in the church dining room. This will be an informal affair in an atmosphere of fun and fellowship. There will be child care. The dining room entrance is on Broadway and there will be someone there to greet you. The evening is designed not only for fun, but to acquaint you with our program. You will have an opportunity to ask questions and Dr. Carter will answer them. I assure you that it will be stimulating and of more than ordinary value to people in our town. Please mail the enclosed card for reservations at once. We think a large number of people will want to attend, but we will have to stop 
taking reservations when we fill up our tables. I hope you will be able to join us for this informative and friendly occasion. All right. There it is. All right, so we started a couple weeks ago um, <clears throat> with this uh, Sheriff's Department report that was read in court. So I'm just going to do a continuation from where we left off, okay? So um, this is still the assignment arrival, okay? Let's see here, yeah, all right. And this is on, uh, Involved party number two, contact. Here we go. While at 3250 Monroe Avenue, I contacted Evelyn Hadley. The following is a summary of her statement, which is recorded and attached to the report. Evelyn was asleep in the master bedroom with Samuel Rodriguez. She heard somebody try to open the door and then the door flew open. A tall, skinny, Hispanic male adult wearing all dark close, who she did not know, barged into her bedroom and then went into her <clears throat> bathroom. She heard something slam and then she heard a window sliding. She then went to walk outside of the master bedroom where she saw law enforcement was in her house. Evelyn did not see any weapons. She did not see the second male. She stated she only saw one male and the Hispanic girl in her house with her children. She was still asleep, was a bit confused, and did not know what had just occurred. This concluded her statement. Involved party number three. While at 3250 Monroe Avenue, I contacted Tanya Hadley. The following is a summary of her statement, which is recorded and attached to the report. Tanya explained she is the daughter of Evelyn. She explained she was sitting down on the couch watching television and her sister was getting something to eat in the kitchen. She heard the front door handle being turned. She did not think anything of it because she believed it was Eric who has access to the residence. She then saw a group of people come in, a Hispanic female and two Hispanic male adults. They were holding a bottle 
filled with a liquid with a rag over it, and she did not know what it was. She said one of the males was a skinny Hispanic male wearing all black. He had a chrome handgun that looked like the weapon I had. She was extremely afraid. The Hispanic male holding the chrome gun told her to go hide. She got up, ran towards her bedroom. The male with the gun was right behind her. She felt he was trying to do something to her. So she ran in her room and locked the door. She heard someone jiggle the door handle, then heard her parents' door slam open. She opened her door and checked to see where her younger sister was. She saw her sister running back towards her bedroom. She allowed her sister in and they locked themselves inside the bedroom. Shortly after, law enforcement told them to come out of their bedroom. Evidence, CD of interviews placed into evidence at the Phoenix Sheriff's Station. See attached MS3. All right, so we'll stop there. Finish that tomorrow. All right. Yeah, let's do a little jury charge. This is called an invitee. Okay, and let's see, you're gonna hear distinguished, which you can write as D-W-I-S-H, and either come back for final D or you can even do it in the same stroke as long as S-L-O-N-G-S, -S, slongs, uh, uh, let's see, reasonably. So reasonable, I write as R-A-E-N-L, so reasonably, because reason's R-A-E-N, so then reasonable, I, don't, I do R-A-E-N-L, reasonably, then I just come back for either A-E or you can come back for long E, or you can even come back for L, A, E, or L, uh, long E. So you have a couple of choices there. Okay, so this is called an invitee. And I'm going to start this at um, 60. It's only a paragraph long. So I'll work my way to 80 on this, okay? Here we go. The first issue for your determination on the claim of the plaintiffs is whether at the time and place of the incident complained of, the plaintiffs were invitees on the premises owned by or in the possession of the County. A person is an invitee on land or premises owned by or in the possession of another when he or she is invited or permitted 
to enter or remain there for a purpose directly or indirectly connected with the business of the owner or possessor or connected with business dealings between the visitor and the owner or possessor as distinguished from benefit or convenience merely to the visitor. Now such a person remains an invitee as long as he or she uses the premises in the customary manner or in a manner which the owner or possessor of the premises might reasonably have expected and at a place where the visitor was invited or where he or she was permitted to be or where he or she might reasonably have been expected by the owner or possessor. All right. Let's mark my spot here. Go ahead and get started with some Q and A. Little light board box handy. All right, so we're going to start at, we'll start at 60, and then I will work my way to 100, okay? All right. Going to be plaintiff questioning. Here we go. Ready? What did they tell you? Objection, hearsay, sustained. Did they say why? They walked over to the Torres house. They just said they walked straight there and back to talk to their friend, Nikki. And did they tell you where Stephen and Daniel were at the time they left. Again, hearsay, overruled. They told me that Stephen was in the front yard. They didn't tell me where Daniel was, no. Did they tell you Daniel was at your residence at the time they left to go over to the neighbors? Objection, hearsay. No, for discovery, overruled. They didn't tell me that, no. I kind of took it for granted. If they walked away, he must have been there playing with his friend. Did your 
son, Stephen, tell you what kind of game he and Daniel were playing? Objection, hearsay, sustained. Did your son Stephen ever tell you why Daniel was climbing on the wall? I don't know. Did you ever ask Daniel at any time why he was climbing on the wall? Objection hearsay. Overruled. No, I don't believe I asked him. My son, I told my son not to climb on the wall. They know not to. Had your son ever climbed on the wall before? I saw him on the three and a half foot part and I made him get off. Prior to this incident, when is the last time you saw him on the three and a half foot part? Six months, something like that. Did you know Daniel's mother? I did not know her, no. I had seen her before. Did you and she, following this incident, ever have any conversations? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. No. Well, I had one of my nieces. After I brought Daniel into the house, I had one of my nieces run to their house. And I had them call the paramedics. Did Daniel's mother respond? Yes, she came right away. Did you and she at that time have any discussions regarding what happened? Objection hearsay as to anything she said to him. Overruled. Yes. She asked me what happened, and I said, from what I heard, that he fell. Aside from that one conversation, was there any other discussions about what happened? Just what Daniel was saying, Daniel was Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Daniel was speaking to his mom and me at the same time. What was Daniel saying? He said that he was falling off the wall and grabbed onto the brick as if he was falling and him and the bricks both fell at the same time. Do you recall what kind of shoes he was wearing? No, I don't. So when Daniel said he was falling off the wall, did he say what was making him fall off the wall? 
Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Not to me, he didn't say that. Did you overhear what he was telling his mom? No. Do you know if Daniel had anything in his hands at the time he was falling off the wall? I have no idea. I have nothing further. Cross-examination. Referring to this bottom laser print identified as Exhibit 3, which depicts a block apparently on the ground. Do you know, Council? You mean it's three blocks, right? Or it depicts something laying on the ground. Do you know on whose side of the wall this picture was taken? It looks to be from the neighbor's side of the wall. Why do you say that? Well, because the angle of these leaves out here, the trees on their side of the wall, even the ground, I don't believe, even looks the same as it does on my side. And I don't think I have trash on the side of my house there. I believe that's right where they keep this trash can, which is probably why this bottle is here also. Okay, Mr. Gailey, what is your present address? It's 1985. Kingswood Lane. K I N G, two words or one? One word. W O O D, Lane. Kings plural, Wood. W O O D. Is that Lane? Yes, Lane. That's in. Huntington, Huntington Beach. Yes, Huntington Beach, California. And what's your zip? 92646. And are you employed, sir? As of now, yes. Where are you working? At Goodyear Tire for about three days now. So I'm having to take a day off now and it's kind of hurting me. Is it Goodyear Tire Shop or it's a shop? And that's Goodyear Tire in Huntington Beach? Yes, sir. Do you know what street it is on? Yes, it's on Brookhurst. When you saw Daniel, he was crawling along between the fence and your house on your side, right? No, I never saw him climbing on the wall. I mean, when you saw him, he was crawling along on the ground. Oh yes, that's correct. Okay, so I'm gonna switch transcripts, okay. Okay.
Now, I'm gonna start this one at 80 and work my way to 100, okay? All right, this is also defense questioning. Here we go. How would you describe the drag mark that you saw leading from the wash to Mr. Miller's residence, broken and not there at times? Did Mr. Miller tell you exactly what time he found the pole in the wash area? I don't recall exactly. I believe it was daylight hours. You didn't record the conversation that you had with Mr. Miller or Mr. Wilson, did you? No. Isn't it true that you asked Mr. Miller, did you think that this poll might belong to someone else like Edison? Do you remember saying that to Mr. Miller? Yes. That's when Mr. Miller replied to you and said, oh, I guess, maybe? No. He didn't, he didn't tell you, yes. I think it belongs to Edison. He said, I guess you're right. It could have belonged to Edison. No, that's not accurate. Do you remember his exact response to your question when you mentioned Edison? To clarify, no. Correction, yes, I do recall. What was his exact verbal response to you? His exact response, I cannot give you because I don't have it on tape. I can give you what he told me and what I remember. Do you remember what he told you? Yes. Which was? He volunteered to me that he believed it belonged to Edison. But isn't it true that you mentioned Edison? Southern California Edison to Mr. Miller. No, you didn't ask him. Didn't you think this poll could belong to someone else like Southern California Edison? No, you never mentioned Union Pacific Railroad to him? I'm sorry, could you repeat the last part? You never mentioned Union Pacific Railroad to Mr. Miller. Objection, vague as to when. I'm thinking, counsel, that you're going to have to start all over again. Ask a question. You're making a statement. This is a statement. He's told you that he didn't bring up Edison. You've asked him several times. I'm trying to allow you to clarify. He told you that your client's the one that brought up Edison. With all due respect, he did say on initial cross-examination, I've heard the testimony, counsel, so the record is what the record is. Ask another question. 
I'm sustaining the objection. Isn't it true that you mentioned Union Pacific Railroad to Mr. Miller during your interview with him on April 8th? Yes. Are you also testifying that when you mentioned Union Pacific Railroad, you did not mention Southern California Edison? Yes. And did you ask him, Mr. Miller, the question, didn't you think this poll could belong to someone like Union Pacific Railroad? No, nothing further. Mr. Smith, thank you, Your Honor. Officer, could you tell me who owns the property that encompasses the ditch where you saw the drag marks dragged to? I don't know. Do you know if that belongs to the railroad there? It's quite possible. Do you know if it does or not? No. Nothing further. Counsel, how far is it from where Mr. Is it Rundell? There's a Mr. Rundell. How far is it from where Mr. Rundell last saw that pole on April 7th to the ditch. What's the distance between those two places? I would estimate the distance to be less than 200 yards. Okay, and can you tell me what the distance is from the ditch to the residents at Sandbar, eight miles less to approximately 200 yards. Pardon me? I said from, could you repeat the question? Yes, the distance from the ditch to the residents at Sandbar. How far is that? Are you talking about the specific point in the ditch where he first saw the drag marks? Otherwise, I think it is vague. Let me rephrase it. You followed or observed tracks from where the pole was on railroad property where Mr. Rundell left it on the 7th, laying down uninstalled, correct? Yes. If I understood your testimony correct, the distance from that location to where the drag marks you observed to a ditch you testified was about 200 yards. Is that correct? Yes. Now I'd like to know what the distance is from that ditch that you've just indicated. How far it is from that ditch to the residence at Sandbar where you saw the truck? Less than eight miles. Okay, and did you observe tire tracks? either on the first set of drag marks or the second set of drag marks. Could you rephrase the question as far as drag marks? Let me ask you with regard to the distance between where the pole was originally left by Mr. Rundell on railroad property and the ditch. Did you see any tire tracks between those two points? Yes. 
did you see any tire tracks between the ditch and that residence at Sandbar? Did you see any tire tracks in that area? <clears throat> yes. Did you compare those tire tracks to tri tire tracks on the truck? I was unable to. The reason why? Inclement weather. Did you take any photographs? Yes. Of the tires? Of the tires? Yes, the tread on the tires. I don't recall that I did. Did you take any photographs of the tire tread marks on the ground? I believe I did but you were not able to compare those to the tire treads on the truck? That's correct. And you still haven't done that right up to today? That's correct. You indicated that when you spoke to Mr. Wilson that he told you he helped Mr. Miller? Yes. Did he tell you how he helped Mr. Miller? No. And when you first saw him, he was a passenger in the truck, correct? No. You saw him walking around the property at Sandbar? No. When the sheriff had him detained with the truck and the cut up pieces of pipe. Did you see Mr. Wilson at that point in time? Yes. Is that the first time you saw him? Yes. Where was he when you saw him? He was in the sheriff's unit. Okay, then you spoke with Mr. Rundell, who followed the truck to that location. Is that correct? Yes. From the Sandbar residence? Yes. He told you that Mr. Wilson was the passenger in the truck? Yes. Did he tell you when he saw him help Mr. Miller in any fashion other than just being in the truck? No. I know you said that this pole was not smooth. Is that correct? Yes. And you're talking about that it's a galvanized type of pole, that the surface is irregular? Yes. So you wouldn't be able to dust that for prints if someone was handling it? No. All right. How'd you guys do? Pretty good. Pretty good. Oh, good. oh you, Nora, pretty good. You probably got everything. What are you talking about? <clears throat> well, I had a coughing fit at one point, so. I saw you get up. I wonder yeah. if that's why. Yeah. Does it seem like it gets worse at night? Um, no, I just, you know, I kind of had a tickle and then it just kind of takes off from there. So, yep. yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, I've had like three kids, so I had to go to the bathroom uh, and <laughs> yeah. Do you understand that, Nora? Uh-uh. Okay. Well, <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> oh. I'll message you later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let her know. Yeah. Oh, so, man. yeah. Funny. Yeah. Well, I hope you feel, I hope you continue to get better and it doesn't linger too, too long. Yeah. I'll be here tomorrow morning. Good. Probably. Good. Hopefully tomorrow night because I really need to work on the, the faster speed. Yes. Yeah. Good. Now, Nora, can you, are you planning on being here tomorrow? 
Um, I think in the evening I should be, I should be here, but, um, I'm not sure about morning. Okay. That's all right. Good. Hopefully. Are you still apprenticing? Um, yeah. Um, they don't know if they're going out tomorrow, but, um, they said they'll let me know first thing in the morning. <clears throat> are you, um, are you going out on depositions or what are you doing? Yeah. Depositions right now. I already did court. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Have you gone out on any depositions yet? Uh, yeah, I, I went out <laughs> three days and I only got three hours. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because the first day um, it didn't go, and then uh, the second day it was like two hours, and then the third day it was one hour. Oh, oh man, that's that's a bummer. And I approached a whole bunch of agencies, um, and I haven't heard back from any of them, so it's a good thing that I know uh, a court reporter just down the street and she's willing to help me. Good. Awesome. Yeah, good. Yes, that is awesome. And I have a friend too. One of my best friends is a depo reporter. So if you need more, um, you know, if you're having a hard time, let me know and I can let her know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. A lot of students from Sage sat out with her. Oh. So, yeah. She works for a uh, younger in uh, Riverside, but she lives, in Yukaipa area, so she takes everything in San Bernardino, Riverside, you know, like uh -huh. the Inland Empire. That's nice and close for you, Nora. I mean, yeah. about as close as it's gonna mm -hmm. get, you know. Because uh -huh. <clears throat> where did you go to court? Did you go down to Riverside or um, I San went to Bernardino? Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, okay. oh, that's right. That's right. Nice. Okay. Well, if you, if you find that you need to get your, you know, you need to get out more and you're not getting enough from mm -hmm. the, the company that you're going out with, then let me know. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, uh, oh, Jill, I, I also wanted to ask, um, when, when we go to the, uh, CSR and we do the, uh, dictation, do we need a machine that can, uh, read notes or? Yes. You're talking about well, I mean, you don't have to. You could take a manual if you wanted to. You, mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking? Like, could could you take an old, like a manual? Well, I mean, because the uh, the machine that we got from Sage, I don't think it can do the, I, I don't think it can read notes in or whatever. Um, so <laughs> it's not hooked up to, uh, what, what, what machine do you have? Um, it's a Genesis. Like it, it doesn't have a screen or anything. It's just a. Um, but Genesis, I, well, Robert would know for for sure. But I thought the Genesis, um, even though they, it doesn't have a screen, I still think it has it has cables and you can hook up to your computer. So like when you write, you don't see what you're you don't see what you're writing on your screen. Oh, I do, but I mean, like, um, I thought. Okay, I might have been confused. I thought they, they, they won't let you bring the computer into the testing area. Or? Right. They won't, but they do let you bring your laptop and a printer. And what you'll do is like the day before, you'll put it in the transcribing room. Uh -huh. So then what they'll do is you'll go into like one room where they give you the, the like the re there's readers in there, you know, for warm up. Then when it's time for your group to go, then you go stand in line for that. And then they take you when it's time to go in and test, they take you in the ballroom and then you, you sit down and you take the test manually. Then they, you have an escort and they escort you to the transcribing room. And then that's but, all your stuff's ready to go. It's all set up, ready to go. But I don't think that she can take her notes that are on, you know, that she took down on her machine that she wrote and hook it up to the computer. I don't think it, <clears throat> I, it's been so long since I've had my, you know, worked on my Genesis. Yeah. So, but I want to say that it won't, you know, no, read on, read. To, yeah, it, won't, it read. won't read on to the, the computer. I don't think, mm -hmm. I don't think it does. Yeah, I don't I, remember. Yeah. I was under the impression that we'd stick like some sort of memory device into the machine, oh. but this thing doesn't have any kind of slot for like a memory device. It just plugs into the computer and then it goes into uh, eclipse. Okay. Okay. Let me ask Robert because Robert will know. Okay. Uh, you can you can borrow my machine for it, Nora, if you want. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Actually. Seriously, I mean, if you're not ready to to buy one yet, yeah, because you're you're not going to buy a student one. You're you don't need a student one anymore. You're going to be 
um, actually working. So, but if you want to borrow mine for the CSR, you're more than welcome to. That, that would be great, actually. Yeah. I know you've envied me forever for having it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind do you have, Nora? Um, it's just. Oh, the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I meant to say Pandora. <laughs> oh, I have a I have a student wave. Okay. That okay. I that I actually got after Sage. I got it through um, Arlington Career Institute. Okay. And okay. you know, got a it's a yeah, it's a student wave. Wave. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me so. ask Robert about the Genesis because I, I, I could have sworn I remember. Lauren saying this machine will get them from theory all the way through school. So to me, through school means going to the test. And I mean, I, I've never really, you know, really looked at one up close, but that was the impression I got. But I will, Robert will know, and I'll let you know, Nora. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can take a picture of it and text it to you too. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. And he'll know though, Genesis, he'll know. Um, because I know we, we didn't have those for very long. Because <laughs> we had a lot of problems with them. Uh, nice. Yeah. Like the tripod, we had issues with the tripod and things like that. So, I'll, but I will find out from him, okay? Okay. Great. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Well, then hopefully I get to see you guys tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Have a great night. I uh -huh. Thank you. I hope you feel better, Pandora and Nora. I will. Get sick. And wrote one more question. Um, Nora, when are you planning on taking the state test? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I think uh, in the, um, is it the March to whenever cycle? Okay, yeah. yep. March, yep. the spring? Yeah. Okay. All right. How exciting. I, I know. <laughs> And I, I was going to say, because I have the Stentura 8000, if, uh, if, uh, Nora, or, you know, if you wanted to use Pandora's, then Pandora could use mine, or, or if you want, you know what I mean? But I'll find out from, from Robert what he says about the Genesis, okay? Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, you guys. Well. All right. I'm going to go make dinner now. All right. I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Okay, Jill. Bye, Nora. I'll Bye. talk to you later. Bye, Nora. Bye, Pandora.